dun 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 part two of cute birds that you can draw here's a couple sketches let's see if we can do them again Good morning and welcome everyone to Deliberately Creative. I'm Stephanie and I am here with cute birds that we're going to draw today. We are sketching in the sketchbook. We're just filling up a page and just going to enjoy ourselves. Maybe make a little scene. I don't know. Birds like to make scenes, don't they? Yeah, and they're easy to put into scenes. Even if all you're doing is a page full of doodles and you put a bird in the corner or in the middle and work your doodles around it, it's really cute. So I am working in my, this is, <laughs> I'm working in it upside down. I'll tell you why in just a second. I'm using the Arteza uh, spiral bound acid free mixed media paper. I love this paper. I have so many really good feelings about this. I have been just dinking around. This was from last week on Thursday, our cute little birds that we doodled. And then I did a class on Tangi, which is a one minute video lesson on how to make fun little birds. It is really quick easy and if you have not drawn any birds and you want to get a really fast catch up on how to do a bird this little bird right here is the one that I did and I just dropped the link into the chat for the tangy if you're already here on YouTube and you already know how to chat you can actually just log in with your YouTube Google account and it makes it really fast and easy if I can get up to, when I get up to a hundred followers on Tangi I'll get two minutes of time I'm finding that a minute and 15 seconds is about my sweet spot but uh, yeah so I'm just I was working on this paper and let's see here we have oh I shared this doodle that I did this weekend um, I just put my hand down and traced around it. You guys, easy things. Everything you need is right here at your hands. All right, pencil, paper, pen, your hand. And then I decided I'd do a little pineapple. Yeah, you're getting a quick little run through some things that I've done this weekend and uh, fall in love with autumn. So I'm getting ideas for pages of things we can do for autumn sketches, autumn doodles, things you can put into your journals, things that you can put onto cards. You know, it's a lot of fun to be able to do things that make you happy. So here is a page of some doodle gems. I got some of the Arteza uh, Everblend markers and even though they bleed through the paper, they don't bleed onto the next side. Ah. And then my pre my preview type sketches that I did for today's lesson. So the I have seen many of you guys signing up for Tangi, and that is so awesome. It really, really makes me happy uh, to know that I've got friends over there. I have printed this out twice. I printed it once on the glossy paper and then I printed it on some standard just paper also and that one is to show you the difference between the glossy and the not glossy paper you get a lot more detail in the glossy paper things get muddy on plain paper but it makes it really easy to draw with a pencil oh I said I'd tell you why I have my book upside down I have my book upside down because this paper is double-sided. It is smooth on one side and textured on the other. Uh, the texture is great when you're doing watercolor, but I'm not as happy with it when I'm just doing my pencil stuff. My pencil tends to smear on the textured side and it doesn't smear as much. 
on the not textured side. I am looking for my eraser. Okay, got to pick something up. Oh, it's in my lap. <laughs> I see that I, I drug my pencil across here. Oh, an, an eraser. <laughs> Let's get started doing some fun, fun birds here. So these birds, move this out of the way. These birds are, remember what I said before, birds are made of eggs. Birds come from eggs and birds, when you are drawing them, they are made from eggs. We're going to do this cute little chickadee right here. And I want to show you, if you draw an egg shape or an oval, and then you draw another one right on top of it, connect it with a line and another line, you've got a chickadee. See? And it is so fun to take a paper that you have printed and trace over it. So our cardinal, it's kind of a rounded out egg. I could have done his egg here and then attached it farther over. Squishier egg for the head. He's got a big beak and a little crown. But see, cardinal. You can tell just from the outline what kind of a bird this is. You can do this. This is, it is that easy, really and truly. Now, sometimes you'll look at a bird and you'll go, well, I don't see the eggs on this guy. All right. I don't see the eggs on this raven or crow. Where would that be? Well, first I look for where's the bottom of his body because you can't see it really well inside of all this black, right? And then where's the top of his head? His head is way up here. So I can put my oval for his head and then the oval for his body or egg for his body is right here. And then he's got shoulders with feathers. And look at that. You wouldn't think that that feather, that shoulder would be down that low, but that's where it is. His beak is really heavy and actually comes back into that egg. And remember what I said about where the eye is? The eye is in line with the opening of the mouth. And then their, their legs, all we are seeing at the front is the shin, the ankle, and their, their toes. So the shin, the ankle, and the toes. That's all we're seeing right here. You might see a little tiny bit of the feathery bits that come down to his knees. And then his tail is just a rectangle back here. So there you go. Fun, easy to do this. And things end up in places you don't expect them when you cut, when you take your pencil. This is just a standard General's white charcoal pencil. You know, I need to focus. There we go. General's white charcoal pencil. So that's how we do that quick and easy oops, outlining. Now I'm going to put my book back here and we will look at this. Let's go do, 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 do. Line it up. Let's just line that up. So you see that, that little raven, you can make them cuter. They don't have to be, um, they don't have to be fierce. 
Chickadees are always cute, as far as I'm concerned. I hope that you guys are having fun doing your doodles, doing your little drawings of fun birds and... Oh, another idea. <laughs> so you can tell that I just use my book to do all kinds of ideas. Absolutely, you can do do your traceables off your television. So even if you can't draw it, you can trace it. Tracing is a skill. That's what I'm showing you here. This is a skill, a tool to learn how to make a bird or anything. If you can trace it, you can start putting that muscle memory into your head, into your body. So I'm looking at this little guy. I want to go ahead and do that little raven. I like that. So I'm going to say that's the shape of his body. And I'm not, and it's a long, skinnier oval, right? Then there was the oval on the top, the, that connecting line, his shoulder. Now I'm just looking at these ovals. Maybe a little rectangle there, too. So there we are. You can do... Uh, these are great for doing in your... Um, in your journals. Feathery, feathery, feathery. Now, these feathers... Let's go ahead and get him up, up, up there so you can see him better. Let's, whoops, wrong way. Oh, that is zoomed as far as I can go on him. Definitely printed out. Definitely, definitely printed out. Then, do you see how his beak is shaped? It's like it comes back at almost a, a diamond. Ooh. We could do that. We can draw a diamond right here and then come out with a slightly curved line on the top and a line there. Aha! His eye. And now remember, looking at this picture here, the top of his head doesn't go up super, super high. He has a very low brow. And then the feathers, there's some like loose fluffy feathers here. I'm going to erase the chalk lines just a little bit so that you can see a little more. You have a, <laughs> well, we have a cardinal that we're going to do today. Maybe that cardinal that is attacking your window <laughs> is there to tell you, you need to make sure you've got your pencil and paper out and that you are sketching along with me. All right. So now this little guy, when I did it in my sketchbook the first time, I set him on top of a pumpkin. I drew the pumpkin after. I think I want to do that again. I like that. I'm going to say the stem is right here next to his foot. All right. And then I'm going to say he's right up on the edge of it. So I'm putting the pumpkin under the edge of his feet. Now my, my line is a little bit wonky here because I've got this thing that's sort of, I guess I can lay it down, sort of in the way. We're just doing a, I guess it's back to school day here in my town. The kids are mostly doing at home school. Um, they're probably going to head into a hybrid not too long from now probably a couple, two or three weeks. 
they'll head into hybrid where they're go going part-time and being home part-time. I know a lot of kids that really need to get into their school buildings, but we need to make sure everybody stays safe. All right, so he's sitting on a pumpkin. <laughs> we will do, uh, anybody want to do this as a card on a future lesson? We'll, I could just have the uh, cardinal, or the cardinal, the raven sitting on a pumpkin, and we'll do it as an autumn, autumn card. Maybe that one we'll, do, we'll just do as a painting since we've already done the whole drawing. <laughs> I love when, when uh, the universe puts fun things in our, in our path. Having that cardinal coming to your window. So I'm just cleaning up a little bit with my eraser. And I think I will ink this one this time. I know last time we didn't do a lot of inking. I need to find where I dropped all my pens. There it is. Wrong one. <laughs> oh, something I found out. If you have alcohol markers, the, the eco pen doesn't react to alcohol markers. All right. Hey, oh yeah. Guys, if you are new here, make sure to click that subscribe button and the notification bell. Hi, Amy. This one started. There we go. Sometimes these pens need a little bit of in, uh, encouragement to start up. See, I'm just drawing over the lines, and then we can erase... what we don't need. Get his little pantaloons on there. He's got uh, little feathers that come down his thigh to his knee. Then we've got those little shins. Now, I'm not making his toes really realistic. They're basically three, three little rice type shapes going forward and one going backwards. And that's his shin. You can put a little texture on it. I, I like just putting a tiny bit of some little hash lines. Just, just little tiny lines going up the leg. His tail back here. You don't really see the individual feathers. Or where it's connected. But, you know, you can put a little bit of something in there if you want. His chest. If you look at this, you can see the... There's little fluffy feathers. He's mostly black. So I'm just trying to give a little bit of an indication of where things are. I think I want his shoulder to come out a little farther. And those feathers behind here just make them stick out. He has his hair is a little kerflimped. Put his eyeball back in. Eyes on birds, so easy. And if you want, you can leave a little spot of light. And if you draw the feathers on, even though he looks kind of smooth, if you draw your outline with a bit of an in and out going on it, it makes it feel a little bit more real. And then coming down the back of his shoulder on his wing, You know, little things like that just make it feel even better. Oh, I'm so glad that you enjoyed episode one. Episode one of Drawing Cute Birds. We did cute birds. <laughs> so let's see. I'll flip back here. First, I showed you how you can take just blobs and make cute little birds. And then... 
we did a little sparrow, a fairy wren, a British robin, and a swallow. So if you're interested in fun little birds, those were all done in episode one. And this is episode two. We, uh, I almost started doing a, a reference like, um, Star Wars, but then I was going, mm, no. And then I almost did a reference to the birds. And then I was like, no, these are cute. These aren't scary. So putting in your pen lines like this, this gives you the opportunity you can, you know, go in with your feathery lines give them some shadows and highlights. I'm not going to do the whole thing in pen, I don't think. You could. But I just want to get some shadows in here. You, but it's really easy to go in and just throw a bit of watercolor on it. Get our pumpkin on here. See, once you've drawn a pumpkin in with your pencil, it's really easy to go back in and quickly get those nice smooth lines because you have an idea where you're going. But this wasn't the pumpkin class. So I'm just going to quickly put it in so I can erase off those pencil lines. Nice bumpily type of pumpkin. We have a pumpkin in the front yard. It came off of a volunteer pumpkin plant that my son had, and he brought it over and planted, planted it in my garden. This thing looks like it came out of Jurassic Park. It is all over the place, one plant. It's really trying to take over everything, and it has a pumpkin that is growing you can if you sat and watched it you probably could see it grow it's just going it's huge and i hope that my son knows that he and his family are getting a giant jack-o-lantern for halloween this year because i don't have any need for a huge jack-o-lantern pumpkin except that growing it was a lot of fun all right so we've got this fun raven or crow sitting on a pumpkin. So if you want a gouache painting of this, we can do that in a future lesson. See, by putting in just the shadow on one side of him. Yeah, I know. I'm doing it, aren't I? I keep wanting to finish it instead of just being sketchbooky. But we are not going to finish this guy today. But by putting the light on one side of it, it makes it more dramatic and makes it feel more like the actual bird is sitting there in light. Okay. Next bird. We are going to do... Let's get on to chickadee and do a, maybe do a couple different chickadees because there's another chickadee right here sitting in that person's hand. I like that. So I think I am going to grab my pencil that I keep sitting down. There it is. <laughs> so there. And that's zoomed in as far as I can zoom with this camera. Sorry. Gouache is amazing and fun, and I love it. All right, so this little guy, I am just going to do up here on this page. This is a sketchbook page, so we can have lots of pictures going on it. The egg for the body the egg for the head. 
make your little connecting line. His head actually comes a bit farther forward. And then his little beak. The beak is almost in line. Yeah. So looking at that, the beak is almost in line with his shoulder right there. Look at that. So you've got your, we've got our egg, really cute, very round body. You've got the second egg on top. You've got his beak. His beak actually lines up with the edge of his body. You really don't see the see the wings on this guy or his tail. You see his little britches. Like that. So let's go ahead and get this guy in. Little things that you, if you pay attention to those little things, so his little beak is coming out to there, his head is here, very cheeky, very cute. I love chickadees. They are one of my most favorite birds. So, because they are so cheeky, tiny little beak, he's got his cap, and this one, his eye is actually up inside the cap. He's got this really cute bib of dark that comes up. And then he's got that area there that's much more light. You see a little bit of feather on the side of his body. And then it comes around. He has little pantaloons or long board shorts on. You see this leg here, the shin, but you don't see the, uh, his britches, his knee. But this one, you see the bottom of his knee. The leg comes down. And his cute little, cute little claws. So let's clean that up. And it's amazing when you clean it up, how you start to actually see the whole bird when you take out the construction lines. And that's the thing. Remember to kind of clean up your construction lines and then your bird just, look at that, pops into existence. And I'm gonna go ahead and ink this little guy up. So there we are. He is so cute, drawing over the top. Remember, I'm not drawing hard, solid lines. These are birds, and birds are living creatures, and unless they have a shell, they don't have totally hard lines. I don't know very many birds with shells. See? Just little fluffy lines. Think about the way the bird is shaped though and have your lines going around the bird. Cute little, cute little toes. But again, I'm not making real realistic toes. I'm just giving him something that would be holding on Yeah, no birds have shells. Those would be turtles. But if you ever watched a sea turtle swimming underwater, it looks like they're flying. 
Haha, <laughs> you see how I got that. All right, so now what I want to do is I'm looking at that cap of his. The top of his cap isn't as dark because there's a highlight on it. So I am going to, to give him his little bandit mask. Just coloring it in. But then I'm going to just put a few lines going up to the top. See how that made the difference between that super, super dark, a little bit of leaving a little highlight area around his eye, just so you can see it. And if you look in the picture, it's there. And then his, his mask slipped. He's one of those chin mask people, I think. Well, that's, you know, birds are people, right? But <laughs> I am in a silly mood today. There we go. Get his little fluffy on. But you see how some very simple lines will give you the feeling of a, of a whole bird. And you don't have to do a ton of detail. A few lines here and there will give you the whole feeling of this bird. There we go. I love chickadees. So now we've got a cute little chickadee looking that way. I. Oh, here, we've got another chickadee. This little fluffy guy. Look how fluffy he is. But he's put together the same way. You've got an egg. You've got another little egg. We've got his little beak. It doesn't come out any farther than the side of his body, it looks like. Fluff, fluff, fluff. But this is your basic bird base right here. This is the basic bird base. You could do, you can make this into a cute little chicky. You know, little baby chicks. Really and truly, the thing that makes things, the birds look different are the the coloring and the shape of the beak. There. So he's got his little claws right here and right here. He's holding on to something. And then his tail is actually going off behind this little guy. I'll just put something that he's holding on to. See? Cute little chickadee. You can do this. All right. Aw, Amy, that's so sweet. I'm glad that I can bring a happy memory to you. I'm sure that your sister was an awesome, awesome person and that you miss her a lot. And Chickadee is just such a sweet little, sweet little endearing word to call someone. Call somebody their little Chickadee. Um, there was a an actor, comedian, person like back in the back in the dark ages of <laughs> of the movies and such. Back before I was born. 
he was not popular when I was a kid, but I remember hearing about W.C. Fields and he would like, oh, my little chickadee. He was very not public, uh, politically correct. And would not make it in this world. Or at least wouldn't make it in my world. See, now I'm just giving this little guy the little fluffers. That little mask that slipped or his little scarf. That's it. This is his little scarf or bandana. See? And then this one has a bit of a, a shine at the back of his head, you know, so I'm not going to go dark all the way to the very back of the head. Just a few lines. You've got a really cute pair of chickadees. These little guys could be sitting on a, sitting on a little fence sitting on an apple branch, sitting in the garden, sitting on his little toes, basically little rice shapes, sitting on a branch. Yeah, chickadees can be super, super friendly. And actually, like that little photograph showed, land on your hands. They become very fearless. See a few little, few little pieces of, of feathers. Yep, W. C. Fields, Julie. <laughs> so not politically correct, right? And okay, I have to this one a little branch to sit on there all right so now we've got our cardinal that we want to do cardinal is going to be a little guy I think we're going to just say he's a little cutie maybe he's just a little farther away I love the little raven too. And so the raven is going to be a gouache painting. I think I'm going to pre-record that though. Um, just because I need to get some videos recorded. I'm going to be doing some vacation time soon. So let's see. I'm going to fit him in. So the egg for the body, he's got a much more proud tummy, back of his body. There we go. Very heavy beak. And he's actually sitting down on that stump. This one is not trying to bash somebody's window. Very straight line actually down the back. So that's what we do. We just put in our basic shape. Put in those eggs and then start, then start putting in the details. So going down his back, Going down to the tail. He's sitting on a stump, so I don't have to even do his feet. His wing is actually just right up against his body and going back towards his tail. He's got that mask that goes up over the, over the beak 
scoops down just a little bit, comes back, and then swoops back towards his chest, almost like a square. And right there is his eye. Remember the eye is straight back from the, from the beak. Although this little guy, I think I made his eye too big. <laughs> so sometimes you, you notice things like that. You, you go, Oh, hold it a second. The eye went too big. So his beak and his, his beak is actually slightly open. So maybe I'll open his little mouth. And remember that the opening of the beak, the beak actually goes all the way back. So all the way back and because if you only have the front of his beak open, he'd never be able to eat anything because his jaw can't open. So you have to make that line go all the way back and connect into the head. You can't see it here. Or that one I didn't come far enough. There. All the way back. Otherwise, he can't open his mouth. And we're going to put his little mask. There we go. His eye needed to be littler. And he's sitting on top, top of a stump. So I'm just going to stump or a fence post. Birds can perch in so many interesting places. But these doodles, doodling up little birds is so much fun. <laughs> uh, one of our community members just had a bird, just had a cardinal knocking on her window, Amy, right before we started the show or right at the beginning of the show. So not, a, not terrifying, just kind of funny. So here we go. Now I'm going to put his little feather crown, his little pointies. And then swoop to the back and work my way forward. His little chest. He's got a very proud chest. They have very strong beaks. And I'm going to leave a little bit of a highlight around just so that when I color this in, I don't completely lose the eye. But I think that's part of the point of cardinals is that you can't see their eye as easy. Then just a few little feathers, little lines. Remember, we're doing these as sketches to prep ourselves to do paintings. So just have fun. If you see something and you're like, oh, I want to try to do something like that. Maybe I'm going to put a few little lines here on that stump or the board. There we go. So I hope that you guys are having fun, that you have enjoyed this. If you are interested in ways to support my channel, Liking, commenting, subscribing, sharing, those are all free things that you can do. Watching the video all the way to the end really helps. If you happen to see my video being recommended, even though you've watched it already, please click on it and watch, you know, and, and come back in and watch a bit of it. 
Don't just click it and then click out in the first 15 seconds, though, because that actually hurts a YouTuber. It hurts a video being surfaced by, by YouTube. If a person clicks on a video and then clicks out almost immediately, YouTube thinks, oh, well, they don't like that video, so we won't show them anymore from that person. <laughs> yeah, so if you're going to watch a video, click on it and stick around for a little while. Oh, look at how cute he is. Let me see. Maybe I will... I think I want the, the little cardinal to get some color. So I'm just going to grab... There's a Tuscan red. And... Is that poppy? That's poppy red. That's a little more orange than I want. But sometimes when you have... Carmine's too pink. See, I'm, I'm kind of going through my pencil pouch here. This is my little travel pouch. That's another... Why do I have two poppy reds in there? <laughs> um, you know, sometimes because I have multiple sets of pencils, I guess maybe he's going to be more poppy. Oh, 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 oh. I see a little bit of crimson. I like the crimson red better for him. And then kind of a Tuscan Rouge to be my shadow. So we're going to do just a really quick, some real quick coloring here. Ugh. I need to sharpen the pencil. So sorry about that, guys. I have to sharpen. So, oh, if you wanted to know, I was using this sharp tank sharpener. You can buy replacements for the, um, for the sharpening heads so you don't have to, to get rid of this. This is actually all made of steel, so it's really quite fun. <sighs> ah, the watercolor pens. Miss Amy, I have about nine videos on watercolor pens. So go check them out after the show. It is, they are so much fun. I love them. The Arteza watercolor pens. Oh, I do have a coupon code down below for, Arte, for Arteza, Arteza. The uh, coupon code is good through the end of September. So, oh, I didn't erase out the, the pencil lines. Let's just look at that. Oh, let's clean this pep, clean this puppy up. So we're just going to put a little bit of color on that cardinal, I think. And that's going to be the only one that gets color. And I'm just using this as crimson red. And I'm just laying it in. Because this is a sketch, this is just to get me started. His chest is actually the brightest red. And then put a little poppy red into it. Look at that. But you do color, do your color ideas. Do quick sketches and then color them. And then back here on his wing, back of his head there too, back of his wing, I am going to use a little bit of the Tuscan Red. <laughs> Mouth sharpener. Oh, you can, you can do these in so many ways. Using these little birds as um, artist trading cards or artist um, single edition cards. And that works really well for doing as your, um, for, for doing your sketching. This is the Tuscan Red. So I'm just laying it in, in a few spots. 
be that darker, more shadowy type tone. Looks very similar to that picture up there, doesn't it? Need to put maybe a little of that poppy onto his beak because it's very orange. Aww, he's so sweet. And then, let's see. Now that I've ran all of my colors down, my white probably went all the way to the bottom. I had a white. Oh, because I took the white out. I am going to go ahead and put a little bit of the white here in his chest and up on his crown. And that little guy, I think he's perfectly fine and dandy. You see how that white is just smoothing those colors out? I can even use it back here on the wing. Could I use a pencil and a wet paintbrush? Sure, you could use watercolor pencils uh, in the regular cup. I'm going to be coming out in just a minute. Mark is home. He is now shifted into his fall schedule, which makes it so I've got my barista asking me if I want a cup of coffee. And I am so excited. I have a whole bunch of video projects that I'm going to do today and getting things ready. You can use your watercolor pencils and do these. Uh, maybe I'll just do up a page of pictures and we can w come back in another time and do watercolor pencils, regular colored pencils, watercolor paint brushes, watercolor brush markers, uh, alcohol brush markers. I am um, all up for making things that are fun and easy. You guys are so creative with the ideas that you come up with. And I want you to make sure that, oh, the other ways that you can support the other ways that you can help my channel. Make sure you're subscribed and and check out my Tangi over on um, uh, Tangi for those quick little videos. They are fun. I'm not actually making money over there, but it's fun and I want to make more. And I have a Patreon. Many of my patrons are here. So thank you. Without my patrons, I wouldn't be able to do this. They are the backbone of my business. So if you want to support in a monetary way, you can join Patreon. You can also purchase things through the affiliate links down below the video. And that gets me a few cents every time you make a purchase with an affiliate link. The coupon code for Arteza is good through the end of September. And I get coupon codes all the time. So just keep an eye out and ask me if it's way after September. We've got lots of fun things coming up. And I am excited for Halloween too, Miss Amy. And hello, Joan. Thank you guys so much for being here. Remember, go out and do something creative. Take care of yourself so you can take care of those around you. And I hope to see you back here again really soon. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.